What a journey. We can make a difference. You and I, we can change the world. We can dream, use our hands, raise money, and get to know the people whose lives will be changed because we cared. The first step is to give to the Rotary Foundation. The second step is to find your passion. The third step is to take risks that move us out of our comfort zone. The goals and objectives that we set should be bold. The kids in my hometown who came out of broken families and poverty needed a safe place to grow up with good role models. Henry Fork Service Center was built for kids to stay out of trouble after school in Franklin County, Virginia. Last fall, Rotarians were at the Henry Fork Service Center building a playground for at-risk kids. The playground was funded by the Rocky Mount Rotary Club from the 4th of July celebration fundraiser and a Rotary District grant. Rocky Mount Rotary Club invested $3,000 and it was, it was matched by a $3,000 grant from the Rotary Foundation uh, District grant. That money grew by a factor of 10 into around $30,000 because the playground also had the, the support of many local businesses, churches, and civic groups. Rotarians all across Virginia and Tennessee also are dreaming and doing projects in their hometowns too. My heart was touched over the past year in taking four teams to Ghana. My usual teams consisted of two or three people so that we could get around quickly in a pickup with four-wheel drive to see our projects. Rotarian Jason Snore and I saw people in communities in an area with civil conflict working together to help themselves by clearing the land, hauling sand and gravel, feeding workers, and doing whatever they could to help dig the well. Their joint efforts allowed us to fund 13 wells instead of 12. They were proud that they helped provide a well so that the extra community could have water to drink. I had the honor of taking our district governor, Ron Mabry, in District 7570 and Mike Meffer to Ghana in November 2013. Ron Mabry told me that he wished that he could have had gone as a district governor nominee so that he could have used our experience to prepare for his time to lead our district. I took them to meet chiefs and villages with mud brick walls and thatched roofs down bad roads. We saw extreme need in the way Rotary is fulfilling that need. We also had a lot of fun too. Rotary International goes out once a year to highlight good that has been done in the world. They sent a video guy, a sound guy, a, a photographer, and senior vi uh, video producers to Ghana in May 2013 to create several videos but the key video will be titled Doing Good in Ghana. The video crew usually wanted to photograph and make movies in a different village every day. The video crew also went to a village with dirty water so they could document the before scene of mothers washing dishes and clothes in dirty water, people fetching dirty water to drink and kids bathing in the same dirty water. The video crew spent the whole day capturing how Rotary made a difference in people's lives. It was a joy to see our work through their eyes. In February 2014, I took 18 people, including Rotary International Vice President Ann Matthews, to Ghana. The 18 people were from South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Ohio. District Governor-elect Herb McClarity from West Virginia was on the team so he could plan his district-wide project for all of their clubs. I've seen our work with fresh eyes. It is an amazing journey. It is life-changing and powerful. The journey was as life-changing for the big group as it was for Ron and Mike with me in a pickup truck. Was the journey worth it? You bet. The group saw the work Rotary had done across Ghana. They met the Rotarians who live and work in Ghana who do the most of the work in Africa. It was also encouraging for those Rotarians in Ghana to make friendships with the U.S. Rotarians they met Rotarians from five clubs in four regions of Ghana. Two of the clubs were chartered just last year. We dedicated wells located at schools and remote villages. We toured hospitals and clinics that needed new medical equipment and supplies. We saw the smiling faces of school children that need books, desks, chairs, latrines, and water to drink. We met Muslim and Christian Rotarians who are working together in peace to change their communities. The team saw six areas of focus. For the team members, they now understand how the economy can be improved by teaching someone a trade or making baskets. Our projects should evolve beyond what we can think or imagine. 
For example, we visited a well near Bolgatanga that was located near a building where women make baskets. The leader of the Basket Weaving Cooperative made a speech that had so much passion that it brought tears to my eyes because the woman thanked Rotary for placing a well close to their homes, which enabled them to spend more time making baskets. They had pride that they had earned enough money to pay the tuition of, to educate 600 girls, their daughters, since 2009. The strongest Rotary projects enable the community, leaders, and the people being helped to solve their own problems. If we allow the people to bring in their own ideas and energy, then they will take ownership and lead the project. That is much better than what Rotarians could have imagined. Rotary provided clean water. The women were providing basic education and literacy for their daughters. That's teamwork and empowering people to transform their own communities. Rotary played a big role in eradicating guinea worm disease in Ghana by placing wells where people were sick. The Tommy Rotary Club organized a celebration of that achievement with dancers, speeches, and well wishes. Rotary invited the key partners and the press to the party. The, the success in Ghana inspired us to raise money to get rid of guinea worm disease from the world. The last place on earth with the most cases of guinea worm disease is South Sudan. I kept in touch with the Rotarians from South Sudan while I was leading my large team in Ghana. Rotarians raised $302,000 last year for new wells with leadership of Area 13 club presidents in many districts around the U.S. and Canada. Rotarians wanted to put the wells where people were sick, like we did in Ghana. In November, the drilling contractor told us that he wasn't going to drill any new wells. In December, the Civil War broke out in South Sudan. I wanted to cry with despair from all the setbacks, but somehow we kept moving forward. I asked the Rotary Foundation about the rules for doing humanitarian grants during a civil war. In spite of the challenges, incidents of guinea worm disease dropped 78% last year to 115 cases. We had three consecutive months without any cases being reported from November 2013 to January 2014 in South Sudan. This year only one person suffers from guinea worm disease through the end of February in South Sudan. Finally the contractor agreed to drill new wells. We've hit five times uh, wonderful water. We want to drill 13 more wells and, and repair 20 other broken down wells. I'm encouraging the Juba Rotarians to hope for peace and a better future. The last stop for our Rotary team in, in February was to, to see the school in the slums of Kamasi in a village called Amanfram. I wanted to show the team the place where I got my start in Africa. I went to Ghana 11 years ago on a mission trip because I was curious. I saw a lot of needs in 2003, but I didn't understand what Rotary could do. I saw a school with nothing. My church and I devoted three years to building that school in the slums. As we built the first classroom on the second story of the high school, we dared to dream that one day those students would take their college exams in those classrooms. I stood in the same place where we dreamed last month to see over 150 students taking their college exams. Our dream had come true. Five teachers asked me if I recognized them because they were students when we started building the school. Now those students have become teachers who are guiding and inspiring the next generation of leaders of Ghana. Their reach to the next generation are beyond what we could do on our own. The school that had no hope is adding classrooms using income from their school. The school is confidently moving forward toward the future. The kids from the slums are receiving an education. Churches and other charitable groups have a passion for building schools and clinics. Rotary has a passion for filling those schools and clinics with vital things for education, literacy, and health and disease prevention. I also learned that through Rotary we can leverage our funds to help many schools across Ghana and the world. Our job is to encourage, strengthen, and lift up our future leaders. They wanted to be involved, to grow in their ability to help their communities. I want you to dream big. Rotary International Vice President Ann Matthews and our team were overwhelmed by the work that had been done in just one country in West Africa. 
The rest of the team members left Ghana wanting to take Rotary Stream but changing the world back home. You are the leaders who are making a difference. We are part of a team with a vision and a goal to make this world a better place. We need help with funding the next grant and dreaming the dream. We're doing it today and with your help, we can do it even better in the future. You can dream big to change the world. Thank you for your help in making these dreams come true.